Could you give us a sign that you're here? Can you tap on something to let us know that you're here? Hello, my name is Ruben Boteo. I am the lead investigator and I thought I would do this video to kind of give my reflections on the Samoa Mansion investigation. <clears throat> so the first question is, uh, describe, describe my experience at the Samoa Mansion paranormal investigation. So, um, so I thought it was interesting uh, when I did do the investigation at the Samoa Mansion when I was actually at the mansion, um, I did not feel we d detected anything. We actually thought it was an unsuccessful investigation. Um, we did some EVP sessions and we did a, a laser grid session. And on uh, those, both of those sessions, we didn't detect anything while we were at the site. It was only after I, that I uh, analyzed the footage after the fact that I actually found um, all, the, all these responses to my questions in the EVP sessions and also in the laser grid session finding unexplained little blinks of light happening on uh, non-reflective surfaces such as the brick wall. Uh, the next question, uh, what were your most interesting discoveries? Um, let's see, so yeah this was an interesting discovery so um, I noticed on, on a lot of the EVP recordings I had, uh, there did not seem to be any clear responses if I played the recordings in real time. Um, it was only when I, when I had to slow down the audio file down to about 45% speed and uh, reduce the noise in the file and amplify it where I was able to make out some clear English words coming through English responses to my questions um, so that was a very interesting discovery uh, it makes me think that perhaps um, the spirits are operating on a different dimension that's perhaps faster than ours um, that's my theory anyway but it's just interesting how you have to slow down the speech through the ghost box in order to understand their words um, so yeah that was probably the most interesting discovery of mine during the investigation. Next question is, were there areas of risk? Um, I think anytime a person does paranormal investigation, there's always risk on the spiritual level. Um, I think it's important to be solid in your beliefs, in your belief system. Um, me personally, I, I'm a Christian, so uh, when I go on paranormal investigations, I actually carry a pocket Bible in my pocket. when while investigating that makes me feel relatively protected um, but but yeah I do believe that there it can be risky uh, on a spiritual level if, if you're if you don't if you're not grounded in your belief system I believe that can open you for something coming through that you didn't intend to come through uh, in your investigations or you know perhaps the spirit might follow you home or you know maybe it's a bad spirit so I, I think it's just important to be grounded in your belief system spiritual belief system um, to remain protected uh, the next question is what did you learn about yourself 
Um, so I guess I, what I learned about my um, self is that my thoughts on the afterlife and spirits are probably true uh, based on my findings just from this investigation alone. Uh, I've had experiences in my life that definitely led me to question, um, you know, um, whether there's an afterlife and spirits and ghosts. Um, but this investigation has definitely strengthened that belief that there is something beyond this life. Um, so all in all, I found this investigation very rewarding and uh, I look forward to future investigations. Um, so that is, my ref that is my experience and reflections on the Samoa Mansion. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cher Kelly. I was born with the gift of mediumship. Can't say that I knew what to do with it when I was younger, but as I got older, I became a meditator and uh, was able to hone my gift through meditation. And uh, so when Ruben let me know that he was starting these paranormal investigations of so-called haunted places in the Eureka, California area, we thought it might be interesting for me to check in to see if any of the haunters wanted to speak with me and then see if my information that I got in, med in a meditative state dovetailed in any way with the information that Ruben and, and the rest of the team pick up with their equipment and their presence. So I went into a meditative state. I asked if anyone was uh, available, willing to speak to me. And a lovely soul named Arthur Colrain came forward. And just uh, we just chatted. Uh, Ruben has all the details of that recording. Uh, he was um, forthcoming and talked to me a little about the back in the day and his band of uh, friends that he travels around with then and now. So, um, yeah, I look forward to uh, the rest of Ruben's work and hope to participate again in the future. Okay. For privacy reasons, Miss X's identity will remain confidential. She is a yoga teacher who taught a yoga class in the living room of the Samoa Mansion. During this class, one of her students felt very uncomfortable. Both Miss X and her students sensed the spirit of a male authority figure hovering near the ceiling in a corner of the living room just behind the student. The student became so uncomfortable that she had to get up and move to the opposite side of the living room. Miss X sensed that the spirit followed the student to the other side of the room. The student continued to feel very uncomfortable and had to leave the class early. They both sensed that the spirit was not happy with what he was observing in the living room. Once the student left the class, Miss X sensed the spirit move back to the side of the living room that it was at before. The Samoa Mansion was built in 1908 as a home for Andrew Hammond, the owner of Vance Redwood Lumber Company, which later became Hammond Lumber Company, while he was in Samoa managing the company operations during the early 1900s. Andrew Hammond's main residence was in San Francisco, California. He would alternate spending a portion of the year in Samoa managing the lumber operations and the remaining parts of the year with his family back in their San Francisco mansion. Pre-1865, the land that Samoa, California sits on was originally inhabited by the native people of the Wiat tribe. 1865, the land's first permanent white settler, James Henry Brown, developed a farm named Brownsville, where he raised livestock. The land currently known as Samoa was known as Brownsville during this time. 1892, the Samoa Land and Improvement Company purchased Brownsville and formed the town of Samoa in its place. Vance Redwood Lumber Company purchased land in Samoa to build a large sawmill. It was the largest sawmill in Humboldt County. 
1900, Andrew B. Hammond purchased Vance Redwood Lumber Company and continued it under its original name. The town of Samoa became one big lumber operation, operating like a military base under Hammond, with all its workers' basic needs met. Although Hammond was also known as a shrewd businessman who was strongly anti-union and did not believe in collective bargaining. 1908. A mansion was built specifically for Andrew B. Hammond in Samoa as a home for him while he was in town managing the lumber company operations. This Victorian-style mansion stands in stark contrast to the rest of Samoa, which is made up of small housing units that were built for the workers and their families. It is clear that this mansion held a place of high prominence in the town of Samoa. It is still standing today. 1912. Vance Redwood Lumber Company was reorganized as Hammond Lumber Company. 1913 to early 1920s. George Fenwick, Andrew Hammond's brother-in-law, lived in the mansion along with his wife Mary Fenwick, Andrew Hammond's sister, and their two daughters while he served as superintendent of Hammond Lumber Company. 1920s. After the Fenwick family moved out of the mansion, Leonard Hammond, son of Andrew Hammond, and his wife Dorothy Hammond moved into the mansion. During this time, Dorothy Hammond founded the Samoa Women's Club, a club that still stands today. 1920s. After Leonard and Dorothy Hammond moved out of the mansion, it became a hostelry for lumber company executives and customers, and became officially named the Hostelry. 1924. Hammond Lumber Company took total ownership of the town of Samoa, California. 1934. Andrew B. Hammond passed away. 1936. Leonard Hammond took ownership of Hammond Lumber Company. 1945. Leonard Hammond passed away and George B. McLeod, a high executive of Hammond Lumber Company, took over ownership of the company. 1956. Georgia Pacific Lumber Company purchased Samoa from Hammond Lumber Company, continuing it as a lumber operation. 1973. Louisiana Pacific Lumber Company purchased Samoa from Georgia Pacific Lumber Company, continuing it as a lumber operation. 1998. Simpson Timber Company purchased Samoa from Georgia Pacific Lumber Company, continuing it as a lumber operation. 2000. Danco Group and Sun Valley Floral Farms purchased Samoa from Simpson Timber Company, ending Samoa solely as a lumber operation and transforming it into primarily property management while preserving Samoa's history. Under this new ownership, the hostelry became officially renamed as the Samoa Mansion and is currently used as a lodging and event space rental for the public. Multiple witnesses have claimed that they have had experiences of a paranormal nature while in the Samoa Mansion. Humboldt Paranormal decided to take up the challenge to see if there's any validity to these claims.
The spirit medium of Humboldt Paranormal, Cher Kelly, attempted to make contact with whatever spirit may be inhabiting the Samoa mansion before the on-site investigation team went in and performed their part of the investigation. Cher's findings were not made known to the on-site team until they were finished with the on-site investigation. Cher and the on-site team then compared their findings after the fact to find any commonalities. Here are the results of Cher Kelly's meditation and spirit contact in the Samoa mansion. Good morning. This is December 12th, 2019. This is Cher Kelly. I'm in a meditative state and I'm asking you to check in with the Samoa mansion. Any ghostly inhabitants thereof at 2 Rideout Street. Is it? I can't read my own writing with my glasses. In Samoa, California. I want to start by saying that there is a hilarious man in this house that's been ever since I set the intention to check on the house he's been chattering uh, a few times a day Wow just excited to talk to me is what I gather and then I have a meditative protocol I go through in the beginning of each meditation and it was just hard to do that now because uh, he's just very <laughs> vocal. So let me make sure that he's right here and I'll um I'll tell you what I'm getting. Okay. He's he's like, well it's about feckin' time, sister. He's got a Irish accent, which apologies to anyone listening. I don't seem to imitate well, and I don't know if I'll channel it um, better than I can't imitate an Irish accent, but... Um, while I was getting ready to come in here, I was eating a bowl of cereal. <laughs> and he said that... I said, well, are you haunting the place? I mean, are you bothering people? And he goes, um, am I bothering people? Am I haunting? No. This is just how I live. This is what we do. And I said, this is how you live, huh? Is that dead humor? And he goes, dead humor? I'm alive as you are, sister. <laughs> so he's very funny and very boisterous and very much the life of the party, no matter where he goes. So, he, I don't know if he'll come through as funny as, because I'm going to try to get some serious information. And he's just, and he's furrowing his brow and saying, I can be serious, I can be serious. So I'm asking him, oh yeah, his name, he was, I was trying to pull that up earlier and I got, I thought I got cold rain. So let me ask him in, again, formally here, what is your name? He said, I'm close enough for government work. It's Arthur Colrain, and it's, uh, and I'm getting that mostly right. So, um, I don't, he doesn't go by Arthur, he just goes by Colrain, and that's how everybody knows me. Uh, I'm happy to be addressed by any one of you who sees me, senses me, can feel me, talk to me, bring it on, bring it on. Visit me, play with me, let's have a drink. Um, so I want to ask him about his life and um, if he if he's in the mansion because he used to live there. We'll start there. Oh, heavens no. I never lived here, this highfalutin house. But I am, shall we say, a squatter. And a happy one at that. Okay, so I'm just going to let him ramble instead of focus on my questions. Um, so basically he's showing me that the he's one of the denizen of Old Town. 
these people were extra alive, if you will. We didn't, uh, we didn't really have the finer, uh, what's the word he's, I'm trying to get, um, pastimes. We didn't drink tea, we didn't read books, we didn't contemplate or meditate. No, we partied our asses off, we worked our asses off, we had fun, we loved hard, it was great. And so because this was so, you know, he's, he's showing me the analogy of uh, veterans. You know, even in World War I, World War II, I mean, Vietnam, it doesn't matter from what war. The thing about men going to war and then coming home is that they never again experience life at, at such a, on such a raw nerve as the life and death situation of war. I mean, the, the tension, the, um, the, you know, just the air being fraught with danger. And for, the, for these men that come back from war, they never, ever feel that alive again, if that makes sense. I won't elaborate. And he's shaking his head. And he's saying, that is the perfect analogy, Missy, because that is how it was for us. And that is why. Reuben is so um, forward-thinking and so in the right place at the right time. And not just Reuben, but we're talking about the whole PT team because we're, there's a lot of us and we're happy to talk to you and we're happy to be recognized. We know we're dead, but we don't look at it that way. That's your perception. We don't really buy into that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool and um uh, is it is it who I was talking to briefly online he was he went he was addressing that while I was trying to clean my chakras and he was saying that oh those ladies with their bums in the air <laughs> he goes what what's a guy to do but he does have remorse he understands that that some of you are more sensitive than others. And he's sorry he frightened that girl. And uh, he promises and other yogis, if they come back, that he will be on his best behavior. And I'm thanking him and, you know, expressing my respect for the mature attitude. But he said it's more than that. Not only will I not be bothering ye, but I will make sure no one else does. So, the reason they uh, are at the Samoa Mansion is that they can be. Um, when they were living on the streets a lot, you know, the flop houses, what have you, a lot of us lived on boats. A lot of us did fishing. Um, we'd look over at that house and it just seemed like, wow. It's like, um, well, he's he's referencing my life because I'm a bit of a Zillow-aholic. Um, we recently moved from the Bay Area to Oregon, so I was on Zillow every day, looking at houses, looking at houses, looking at houses, and it kind of came a bit became a bit of an addiction for me. And every now and then I'll go to Tiburon or Sausalito or some really wealthy town and look at mansions, you know, five million, ten million, whatever. There's one I looked at, it's got like twelve hundred acres, it's seventy six million. And you know, I just look at it out of curiosity. How do the rich people live? And he said that's what the Samoa mansion was. He said it sat on the hill. We could see it from town, we could see it from the boat, and it was, um, it was where the rich people lived, and he wasn't really a Samoan, he was a fisherman, and so were his people in the old country. Um, he didn't go to Samoa, he knew there was more of a lumberjack situation over there with, uh, cookhouse and the mills and um, that wasn't his scene but he knew a lot of those guys so I, I should have gotten a list of questions from Ruben maybe but 
We'll just see what else. Uh, cool rain. Cool rain or cold rain. Rainy. He said, I have a lot of monikers, sissy. Um, see what else he wants to look, tell me about. Okay. He's got like a, um, a section of the house and it's a vertical. So I'd, he's showing me how he doesn't go near the front door. He says, um, I, we're vertical. We come in from the top. We don't come in horizontal like you people do. That's diff That's physical stuff. Um, you'll see. When you get over here, be happy to show you. Chimneys are good. Conduits. Choo. Pointed roofs. Good. Conduits. Choo. So there's a conduit in the house. I'm going to tell you where it is. It's... Notice how accurately Cher is about to describe the first floor of the Samoa mansion, even while she stated she has never been in this mansion, nor seen any map of it beforehand. If you walk in the front door, I'm seeing lots of glass, um, and I don't know if there's a glass vestibule, but you walk in and it's just glass situation, and I'm seeing it back in the day, there was um, some pretty hoity-toity plants, like um, I'm seeing a sunroom filled with gardenias, which you know, had to be, had to be amazing to walk into that room. But anyway, I've never been in this house, but he's showing me you walk straight in through the vestibule or the outer chamber there, front door, straight in, and there's a little room. It looks like an antechamber or something. And then straight in, there's more of a, um, it, does, it isn't the parlor. So I don't know what you would call it, but he's showing me a, another room, and that's where you hang your cats, hoats and cats, don't you know? <laughs> and um, and then you go forward into the biggest room that is straight ahead from the door. So I don't know what corner of the world that is, as far as northeast or southwest, but it looks, it actually does look kind of northeast. But anyway. Biggest room straight ahead, and then you go. Once you're in that room with your back facing the entry to the building, the door we just talked about, the front door. So you're in the farthest room straight ahead from the front door with your back to the front door, and now you look over to the front left corner of the room with your back to the front door. The left corner. And there is a conduit. It's it's like a chute. It's like a beam me up Scotty. He's using terminology he believes I can um, conceptualize. So that's where we come and go. Uh, second floor, basement. Is there basement? Third floor. I mean, the chute looks really big because it goes up beyond Earth. So I don't know how big it is in the physical, but he said, if you want to put your meters there, Sonny, that's where you're going to get the most in his opinion. According to Cher, Arthur Colrain was the one who expressed the sound, not her, and she was not sure why at the time. After hearing the spirit box session in the last section of this video episode, Cher noticed that the sound of the spirit box perfectly coincided with how Arthur Colrain imitated the sound which is very interesting, as Cher never heard the sound of a spirit box in her life before the spirit meditation of hers. It is as if Arthur Coleraine was imitating the actual sound of the spirit box. And second floor is actually a little more active um, than the first floor, in his opinion. So, okay, so that's interesting. I hope that pans out, or has already panned out, Ruben. Interestingly, the kitchen is the location where we receive the strongest spirit responses during this investigation during a spirit box session. Let's see what else he wants to say. I'm asking him what was the best part of being alive, uh, being in the physical. And he said, I've already told you, Lassie, it's the drinking, the, the fucking, the 
the party and the laughing. Oh, he's a laugher. And he actually, when I was tuning into him these past few days, I was mostly getting some raucous laughter. And it was cracking me up. And now, you know, we're a little more sedate right now because I'm in the meditative state. But he has the loudest, most robust, raucous laugh. And he's puffed up about this compliment, he thinks. He said, laughing. People say bread is the staff of life, but it's laughing. Sex and laughing. Okay. Oh, and he says, and by the way, he, he didn't just grab the lassie's ass. He was a little more inappropriate than that. And he, he does, now that he's been called on it, he definitely feels uh, remorseful and apologetic. So he's um, he's saying that to go in not with the meters and the chick 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 chick, but to go in for the purpose of meditation or prayer or yoga or anything that you people are into, some kind of ceremony, some kind of session. It would be great to bring some kind of uh, Native American Indian cleansing method. And I'm seeing smudging sage, uh, St. John's wort, Palo Santo, whatever you have, Lassie. And just go around that big room and um, it won't clear out any portal. It won't affect us really, but it, he said what he could see the beauty of that uh, practice is, is to clear, it's it's the same as when you vacuum or dust. You spit, you're spiffing it up, you're shining, you're, you're casting out the old uh, dust bunnies and, and the old stuck energy. I mean, shit settles. You've got that gravity and it shit settles. This will clear that out. And he highly recommends it. And if I'm remembering his name correctly, I um, she will feel the difference, and if she can get the lassie back that he was rude to, she will feel the difference as well. So, I'm scanning, scanning his brain, man. What else you got for us, Rainy? Yeah. He's just, he's, he's sitting forward, he's in a little chair, and he's got one leg crossed over the other, and his arms folded, and he's leaning forward on the one knee. He just uh, looks contemplative. Um, and he says, you ask your friend, uh, what else, if they need specifics, I'm happy to provide them. But uh, for now, he's going to let us go, and I hope that's been... Um, good for today. Oh, he goes, yes, other people. I have my buddies with me. Um, there's a group of us, and we make the rounds. And um, Okay, so I really feel a sense of wrapping it up, but he said he'd be happy, more than happy, overjoyed. I'll come back anytime you call me, Lassie. Okay. <laughs> so I'm thanking him profusely. And off he goes. So, I've got a little more work to do on my own. And uh, so I'm going to close this recording, Ruben. And, um, and you know, if you have more questions, um, it sounds like we could go back in and get more answers. Uh, okay, that's the end for now. Bye. Okay. So here we are at the site of our witness um, at the Samoa Mansion of Paranormal Activity on January 28, 2020. It is approximately 9.45 p.m. And we are uh, facing the camera toward the exact location where our witness stated that uh, paranormal activity has happened.
Um, this is the house, the Samoa mansion that we are going to be doing a paranormal investigation on, on February 22nd, 2020. So here is my witness interview. Um, the, our witness chooses to remain anonymous. And so we are going to honor that. Um, so I'm going to just call her, um, uh, uh, Miss, Miss X. <laughs> okay. I have permission to say your gender. Okay. So it's female. Are you willing to give me your current age? No. Okay. Let's see. Are you willing to give me the age at the time of your experience? Two years prior. Two years prior. Okay. Do you, are you willing to tell me the date of your experience? It was approximately late October, early November of 2017. And do you remember the time of day of your experience? About 6 o'clock. 6 p.m.? 6 p.m., probably between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. What was the exact location of your experience? It would be the right lower side of the room, uh, but mostly, mostly up at the top of the room. Toward the ceiling? Toward the ceiling. So were the cameras facing uh, toward that door on the corner, toward the ceiling? Yes. Okay, so was the experience visual? It was not. No? Not for me, no. Okay. Was it audible? It was not. Was it olfactory? Were you able to smell anything? Mm -mm. Was it sensed? It was. It was sensed. Was it felt? It was. It was. Um, there was a change in in energy, kind of an energy of the air. So yes. Was it an apparition that you saw? It was. Would it make a visual, but. Right, I didn't see an apparition. Okay. Um, one of I was teaching yoga in this room because we were temporarily displaced for some maintenance where I typically taught yoga um, at the women's club. So this was our <laughs> this was our substitute room, and one of my students um, felt it very profoundly, and she shifted her mat several times just uh, all, almost constantly she was just constantly shifting and moving she was very uncomfortable and she was on the very right side of the room with her head toward the door and um, she kind of complained that that she didn't like it here and she moved to the opposite side of the room in front of the television so this was something she experienced not what you experienced but she was telling you what she was experiencing so we both sensed something and um, it was enough for me to look up. So I sensed it, it was thick enough for me to look up to the ceiling. So I did look up several times and I noticed, I also noticed her being um, uncomfortable and moving around and she would glance up and we didn't say anything to each other at the time, but she eventually moved her map to the spot in front of the television. And she stayed there for a little bit, but she was still uncomfortable, and so she left. And um, we were probably most of the way through our practice, and about 15 minutes later, we cleaned up and put the room back together and left, and she was waiting outside, and she told me that she was very uncomfortable. She sensed something in the room that she felt was angry, and that she didn't like it and she didn't want to come back. The spirit was angry because you rearranged the room for the yoga practice, theoretically? Theoretically, the sense, the feeling and the sense that I had was that it was a disapproving energy. So it just felt like somebody was, you know, looking down on us and was very unhappy with the activities we were doing in the room. That's just what it felt like. Did it attempt to make or make contact? No. Did, did you feel you recognized this energy in some way? I didn't recognize it in a way that I knew the person or what it might have been, but um, but it seemed like it had, uh, it was somebody who was in charge, so it had more of an authoritative feel about it, and it was very disapproving, and it, and it felt more male 
well, distinctly male, didn't, did not feel feminine at all. I didn't sense anger so much, I sense more, you know, disapproval. Do you have an idea who the spirit or whatever presence you sense might have been? I'm not clear about that. Mm -hmm. I know that this was the manager's mansion mm -hmm. of the town of Samoa and that it was a lumber company in the lumber town. Could the spirit that Miss X and her student encountered had been Arthur Coleraine as going by Cher Kelly's spirit contact, Andrew Hammond as going by the history and origin of the building, or perhaps some other spirit? Did it speak or convey telepathically? Not, not except for the, the feeling that came along with the sense of something being there. Was it just you and this witness that, that sensed this? Like, were there other people in the room? Did they sense it? No one else sensed it. But there were other people? How many people, approximately? Four others. So six total? Yes. Okay. So it was just you two that were sensing it, but nobody else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was it close by or far away? It was close. Describe the sensation. just that it was heavy. It w and it was uncomfortable. It was very, uh, very different than when we first walked in the door. It's almost like it descended, but only in that part of the room and we um, I felt it move um, I felt it move a little bit toward where the television is so over toward that side of the room so it moved from that corner over toward the television mm -hmm. it mostly stayed in that corner but it did move a little bit and it went back so it moved all the way toward the television and then went all the way back so all the way across this room and all the way back was the television here when you were when you were doing yoga here the same TV or was it different The television wasn't there at all. So, but so this was just like a wall. So move, move toward a TV area mm -hmm. for about how long would you say? Um, you know, we were probably nearing the end of our practice, and so it was probably the last. Did you hear that? Twenty minutes. I heard something in the kitchen. So I came from upstairs a little bit, but I've been hearing yours. a few stuff. Well, you've been recording. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe you caught it. Maybe you caught it. Yeah. I'm hearing a little bit of regular movement, but there's yeah. a lot of swans so far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it moved toward the... Is that a voice? Maybe that was the squeaking from the floor. I hear that. Interesting. We're getting some sounds from what appear to be upstairs. Are there any spirits here that would like to speak to us? Any spirit people would like to communicate to us? You are welcome to do so. We come in peace and in total respect. Okay, um, so when it was toward the TV area, about how long would you say it was there? If you can give it a time frame. About 10 minutes. And then it moved back to the corner. Mm -hmm. So when it moved over to the TV, didn't you say she switched locations, that other witness? She did. So did it follow her? Um, that's what it seemed like. Um, it seemed like when she moved over there, the, the <laughs> density kind of moved over at the same, well, I don't know if it was the same time, but it seemed to. Um, 
And then, um, like, when the spirit went back to the corner, did the yoga student move somewhere else, or did she stay there? She left. She left. She left. Yeah. So, um, so the spirit, when it moved back to that corner, did it do so right after she left? About, yeah, about the same time, yes. Same time? Mm -hmm. And she left because she was feeling the spirit? Yes. Did she tell you, like, 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 was the spirit, her, like, pinching her? Or, like, did she explain what, like, she pretty much experienced what you felt? Was it just, like, a density? Or was it, like, interacting with her physically or auditory or olfactory or any way else? The way she described it, she just sensed it. But to her, her perception was that it was angry. So that's all she explained on how the spirit was interacting with her? Mm-hmm. Okay. So she didn't go into much detail. Mm -mm. So, um, the, what was the full duration of this entire experience, would you say? Almost an hour. Did you feel anything physically? Just the, the density. Mm-hmm of the air seemed really, the air just seemed really heavy, the atmosphere seemed heavy. So, um, and it was, um, toward the end of the practice, it was very cold in the room. So about the, how many minutes toward the end? Last 20 minutes, 10 minutes? Um, probably last 15 minutes. Last 15 minutes felt physically cold? Physically cold. Colder than it was before those 15 minutes. Colder than it was before, yes. It was colder than when we entered the building. Okay. I think I, I think I got everything here. Further description of experience. Is there an, any further description you'd like to give of your experience? Or does that pretty much sum it up? That sums it up. Okay. Well, I think we have something to go on here. In this scene, we are using a LaserGrid GS1 device in the area where Miss X had her paranormal encounter. This device projects a laser grid onto a surface. If a spirit entity has enough physical volume, substance, and or mass of any kind, they should theoretically bow the lines of the laser grid, making their physical dimensions and outline more visible to the naked eye. During this session, we did not detect any large physical anomalies passing through the laser grid projected on the wall, but we did detect unexplained little blinks and movements of light, mostly taking place on a low reflective surface such as a brick wall. It is said that spirits can appear as orbs of light. Not sure if the physical dimensions of spirit orbs are being captured here through the laser grid or not. We will let you be the judge. I really know what to expect, so yeah, all the lights are out. Okay, so except this, so how do we? Oh, uh, that's the switch behind oh, the. Okay. okay. And there's two switches there. I don't know about that one. Two. It might just be. A... This is the exact ceiling corner where Miss X stated that she and a yoga student of hers sensed a male authority figure spirit descending from the ceiling and hovering in the ceiling corner, observing the yoga class that Miss X was instructing back in 2017. It was sensed by these women that the spirit was displeased or angry with what he was observing. During this period, Humboldt Paranormal attempts to recreate the scene of Miss X's 2017 yoga class in the Samoa Mansion living room where she and her student had their paranormal experience. In this scene, Miss X will lead a yoga session for Humboldt Paranormal investigators in the same living room with the hope that it will again bring forth a spirit during this 2020 yoga session. And where should I sit? Um, you can choose either spot. Okay. I'll sit right here. Since this is also where, as you said, moved, the, whatever it was moved over here. Right. So I'll be made up. Okay. Yoga. Start with some breath work mm -hmm. and with a guided relaxation. So sit in a comfortable seated position with the the blanket. Right 
under your tailbone. So allow you here, Miss X is leading a yoga session for humble paranormal investigators in the same living room where Miss X and her student encountered a spirit entity which descended down into the same ceiling corner while she led a yoga session three years before. During that time, Miss X and her student sensed a male authority type spirit who seemed displeased with what he was observing in the living room during Miss X's yoga session. By Miss X again teaching a yoga session in the same living room for Humboldt Paranormal, will it irritate a spirit enough again to make it manifest on camera in front of the laser grid during this investigation? This is precisely what Humboldt Paranormal is trying to test for. You don't have to do the lotus up okay. position, just a comfortable seated position. Got it. Okay. Okay, let your hands rest on your knees. If you feel like you need some support, you can use your blocks to prop your knees like this, so that you're completely relaxed. So let's sit with, start with our spines, lengthen. Our hearts up. And we're going to begin with three deep Ujjayi breaths. So these long deep breaths in through your nostril. Firming up into your hips again. Take two long deep breaths here. In through your nostrils and let yourself hear your breath as it comes. Let's do one more breath here. Let your shoulders come to the back. Like your shoulders are um, like you're sinking out your heart, your chest. Up through here. 
on your toes. And then when you're ready, lower with your strap all the way down as far as you can on the right. That's okay. okay. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> so and, good. Uh -huh. Yeah, and if you want to just rest, um, you can go ahead and can you bring it down anymore. Let it rest on your um, and block. So straighten your opposite leg. Straighten your left leg. There you go. We use that for balance. And then just let go. Grabbing your toes, bring your knees to the outside of your waist. So it's going to be up on the edge of your body. And roll one way. Rock back and forth. <laughs> Spirits that are already here, spirits who have been here and left. Anybody remaining? And acknowledge each other. Namaste. Namaste, Ruben. Namaste. Namaste, David. That's it. Is the spirit of Andrew Benoni Hammond here? Andrew Benoni Hammond. The man who led the company Hammond Lumber. The man who this house was built for in 1908. Andrew Benoni Hammond, are you here with us? Is there perhaps a George Fenwick here? George Fenwick, the brother in law of Andrew Benoni Hammond. Perhaps Andrew Benoni Hammond's wife, perhaps Leonard Hammond, the son of Andrew Benoni Hammond, are you here? Would any of you like to visit us? We are here conducting a paranormal investigation and if you are willing to make your presence known to us, we would highly appreciate it.
and be, would be very grateful. And we come in complete peace and complete respect because we know this is your home and that we are guests. We are visitors. Notice that these three lights line up in a perfect line. Is this an intelligent response by a spirit? Additionally, notice that this line perfectly points toward the same ceiling corner where Miss X stated she sensed a spirit to send from three years before. Is this a sign that a spirit is present, perhaps from the same ceiling corner that Miss X sensed a spirit three years before? Do you have a lot of good memories here, Andrew Benoni Hammond? I know that you led Samoa for, for a while. You kind of owned Samoa. And you were in charge. And this was your home that you lived in when you were in town managing the operations here. I also know that you had another mansion in San Francisco. That was your other home, but this was the home you spent when you were here in Samoa managing your operations. I read a good deal of history about you and your family. It's very fascinating. I was very fascinated. There was actually a book written about you, which I haven't read yet. My understanding, though, is the book kind of portrays you as a shrewd businessman who, who believed in, who was very anti-union and underpaying the employees. Not to say that in any disrespect. I'm just being honest. If, some, if there is a spirit here, can you let us know that you're here? Can you make a sound? Can you maybe knock on something? Can you let us know that you're here by making a sound? Any, are there any spirits here? Any spirit people at all? in this house? thought I might have heard something faint. Sure. Our purpose here is to seek the truth of the paranormal. And so if you are willing to assist us in learning about that truth, we would be forever grateful. This is an educational video series that we have here, and we hope to educate the public as to the truth of the paranormal. And if you could assist us in educating people of that, we would be forever grateful.
maybe, you know what, I do have my spirit box. Maybe I can break out my spirit box and we can try to communicate with it in real time. Cool. Yeah. Okay. This might be a good time for that. You what? Um, sure. Starting up an S-Box Ghostbox device, which is a radio device that rapidly scans through all radio stations, generating radio signals and white noise, which theoretically spirits can use to communicate with us in real time. <laughs> Are there any spirits here? So, actually, to be, feel more confident in what may be coming through on this device, I have a, what's called a Faraday pouch. Hello, is there a spirit here? If there is a spirit, can you communicate to us through this ghost box, this spirit box? Can you say hello? Hello? Here, we are conducting a laser grid session in the master suite bedroom on the second floor, directly above the living room where Miss X's paranormal encounter took place. We theorize that the spirit Miss X encountered may have come from this master suite bedroom, since Miss X sensed the spirit descend into the living room from the room directly above, which would have been this master suite bedroom. The living room where Miss X and her student had their paranormal experience is directly below this master suite bedroom. Did the spirit that Miss X and her student encounter descend from this room down to the living room below? If so, does that spirit live primarily in this master suite bedroom? We performed this laser grid session for about 15 minutes and seemed to receive no sign of spirit activity, except for maybe this. Is there any here, anyone here with us that wants to say hello? Could you give us a sign that you're here? Can you tap on something? to let us know that you're here? David and Ruben were the only people present in the mansion at this time, as Miss X left the investigation earlier than this period. This tap sound is clearly coming from a different location in the mansion outside this master suite bedroom that James and Ruben are in. Is this a spirit's response to Ruben's request that it make itself known by tapping on something? We performed a laser grid and an EVP session in the kitchen on the bottom floor. 
The same kitchen is also the location where Cher Kelly states there is a spirit portal that allows spirits to freely travel into and out of the mansion from the spirit world. These results may shock you and make you seriously question your view of the spirit world and reality itself. Consider yourself warned. I guess I can try it without the Faraday pouch. While Ruben is starting up the spirit box, David is wearing an EVP Wrist Recorder 3 device around his wrist, which is an audio recorder recording audio and its surroundings separate from the spirit box.
Is that, was that you, Andrew, when you said, that's me? It seems that Andrew Hammond is continually trying to make it clear to Reuben and David that he is present. Reuben keeps asking if Andrew Hammond is present, and he keeps affirmatively responding. Please say hello. Did you own the Hammond Lumber Company? I notice at this point that EVPs may still be coming through, but they are getting weaker in strength and clarity. A theory states that spirits use the energy from the radio transmissions to form words. Spirits lack the physical throat, tongue, and vocal cords that we humans possess, so they use the energy of the radio transmissions to form the speech that we take for granted. This may also be the reason why it seems so hard at times for spirits to speak clearly. They lack the physical mechanisms that a human body has to create speech. Can you say hello? Can you say hello to this device? Famous? 
mistake. Humble Paranormal believes that the Samoa Women's Club was actually founded by Dorothy Hammond, the wife of Leonard Hammond, not Mary Fenwick, the sister of Andrew Hammond and aunt of Leonard Hammond. The Women's Clubhouse in Samoa down the street. What is really interesting about this response is that Reuben mistakenly asked for Mary Fenwick, who he referred to as founding the Samoa Women's Club, when it was actually more than likely Dorothy Hammond, wife of Leonard Hammond, who founded it. Perhaps this was actually Mary Fenwick responding to Reuben through the spirit box that, no, she was not the one who founded the Samoa Women's Club, as Reuben stated. The fact that this response sounded female also provides support for this theory. Sounds like Leonard Hammond did not want to be bothered. Humboldt Paranormal's theory is that Reuben upset him because Reuben thought it was Mary Fenwick who founded the Samoa Women's Club when it was actually his wife, Dorothy Hammond, who founded it. <laughs>
House, no Chair Kelly. something maybe it's just I have we have to look over the footage to see if what we got and so maybe we did get something so I'm afraid that some keep in mind that Reuben and David were not able to detect or discern hardly any of the possible spirit responses that came through during this EVP recording session as they happened in real time all they mostly heard was static they thought they had an unsuccessful investigation Ruben had to go back and analyze the audio footage after the fact using special software to find and extract the possible spirit responses that were found and present them to you as they were given in this video episode. We are sure a question going through your mind is, why was the on-site investigation team not able to make contact with Arthur Colrain or Rainey as contacted by our spirit medium Cher Kelly? Humboldt Paranormal has a theory as to why this is the case. Cher is a firm believer that if you attempt to make contact with a specific spirit, that specific spirit will respond and no other spirit will. The on-site investigation team was not made aware of Cher's findings until after the on-site investigation was complete. Humboldt Paranormal performed research on the Samoa mansion before the investigation and found that it was originally built for Andrew Hammond while he was in town managing the operations of his lumber company. Because of this, Humboldt Paranormal felt surely it must be Andrew Hammond who would be haunting the Samoa mansion. The on-site investigation team spent about 99% of their time trying to specifically make contact with Andrew Hammond and his family, and 1% of their time asking for any other spirits to come through. Because Humboldt Paranormal focused so much of their energy in trying to make contact with Andrew Hammond and his family and no one else, Humboldt Paranormal theorizes that is why Andrew Hammond and some of his family may have responded while no other spirit did, and probably why Arthur Colrain may have not come forth 
because he was not being sought after. So, what do you think? Do you think we obtained evidence of the paranormal in this episode? Keep in mind that all of our footage is 100% real. None of it was doctored to be anything other than what it is in its raw form. We take our pledge very seriously to give you nothing but the truth. Thank you for accompanying us on our investigation into the Samoa Mansion on this episode of Humboldt Paranormal.